see. I mean, in this game, you have had every card draw in the definitely. In the deck. Um, I definitely had some good draws in here. Um, like it's almost at that point where you can't play your card draw anymore because you have too many cards in hand. It sometimes happens with this deck. Um, like right now, I literally cannot play the arcane intellects. Oh, well, unless I also play the mirror image, because if I just arcane intellect and pass my turn, I will have too many cards in hand and I will miss my next draw. Um, I'm probably just gonna play the double Malthus right here. Yeah, I mean, that seems like the best play. Yeah, um, like I got Frost Nova, but this board is not worth freezing yet. It's simply only, f it's only five damage and I'm at 29 HP. Um, so it's better to just cycle the Novice and to uh, draw into some more important cards. Maybe like a Doomsayer, because that would combo really nicely with Frost Nova next yeah. turn. You see in Icelands, I mean, you need to draw your combo as well. Yeah. Well, it still takes a lot of turns, since I basically need to stall the game game till turn 9 to Alex and the next turn burst him down so um, uh, I think I'll probably like by that time I'll probably have enough damage to kill uh, him Carmen is uh, starting to apply a lot more pressure right, right now with the flame plank totem it's 8 damage which is quite a lot actually so this is the point where I'll probably uh, start uh, freezing or I, I might um, do the mirror image and arcane intellect since the mirror images uh, take up the two hits of four damage so those are very efficient and to just play the arcane intellect to draw more again no so you would play double mirror image then i guess otherwise you would uh be at full hand if you do the well i might even go for something different like uh blood mage stalnos uh, frost nova um because um, if the Blood Mage survives, I could Blizzard for 3 damage next turn, which clears all the minions. Yeah. Uh, so that is also a pretty good play. Um, th those are the two good options right now. I end up going with uh, Blood Mage Frost Nova, probably because I don't really feel like playing Double Mirror Image, because it's very weak to Lightning Storm. Um, Karma takes it out efficiently with uh, Fire Elemental. Um, now again, you have the same issue. You don't have your Doomsayer. But I guess Blizzard is okay. It freezes the board. Get some and this is from. like the advantage of like a Freeze Mage against Shaman. Like Shaman generally does his damage. Like They do have some direct burst from their hand, but he wants to do damage with his face. Like He doesn't have enough burst out of hand to kill me from this. So just the Freeze mechanic is very strong. Like... It completely shuts him down right here. Hoping for the healing totem, but didn't get it. Oh, there we see the Doomsayer. Yeah, um, I'm probably not going to play the Doomsayer right here, because um, it's very tempting to play the Doomsayer in Frost Nova, but as you know, no, this um, Karmat has no targets for his Hexes, no targets for his Earth Shock. So the chances are very high that he has some of those. Like you can yeah. see in his hands, he has double Hex. So playing the Doomsayer is completely pointless since it will get Hexed. So I'll probably end up playing Frost Nova, Arcane Intellect, and Mirror Images. Um, this lets me, you know, cycle my deck more and I won't miss any draws since I can play three cards out of my hands. It freezes the board so it protects my life and it develops the board with mirror images to protect me in the future. So I think that's the play I'm going to go with. Um, like Doomsayer right now just doesn't do anything. Then I have to Frost Nova Doomsayer and then ping his face. Like It's a lot better to play Arcane Intellect to cycle your deck. Yep, I, I, can, I can definitely see that. Which is what I end up going with. Uh, I think Carmen will probably play the Asher Drake indeed. Um, just develop his board some more. Yeah. 
he doesn't have enough space on his board to totem, so it's all he does. Um, now, as you can see in my hands, um, I have the ice block, which is probably what I'm want to develop right now. Since if I can ice block this turn, I can safely Alexstrasse him next turn, and I do have enough damage with the fireball, frostbolt, and double ice lands to kill him this turn after. So all I need to do is play the ice block right now and um, make sure that he cannot proc the ice block. Yeah. Since if he cannot, like Shaman doesn't run healing, that's the advantage of knowing your opponent's deck. I thought for a second there of like kind of calling the flame tongue totem since that kills three of his uh, things in the middle, but that would have been a mistake. Um, this kind of called is better since it freezes the fire. Fire elemental, so it prevents uh, more damage. Yep. Like it's not the point of my deck to um, clear its board. Like I don't care if he has more minions. It's just I want to make sure that I don't die. This is also why I play the second mirror images. Although it just dies as collateral damage to the lightning storm Carmen yeah. in his hand, we, which is most likely gonna play. But it forces him to play the lightning storm, which again makes it less likely that he can proc the ice block. And if he can proc the ice block this turn, he loses the game. Yep. And we see that uh, he can't. Yes, so at this point I know I've won the game unless Karma runs some very weird cards that actually have healing. Um, so this is just an easy Alexstrasza on his face. And, the uh, golden Alexstrasza. This is actually my only golden legendary I have. Very happy that I got that out of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially yeah, playing, uh, especially playing freeze mage is pretty pretty important yeah, it's, card as it's well. It's the key card. Like you use almost every game that you. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. We see a now. Karmat will just. Uh, Karma will uh, proc the ice block now and probably hex the Alexstrasza and kill it. Yeah. Um, at this point, he probably realized that he's like very close to that being at 15 HP. Um, no, nothing he can do about it though. Like he simply has to kill the Alex and proc the ice block. Um, he does it in the correct order with attacking with the Asher Drake first and then the Blood Mage Thomas to uh, leave me at 1 HP. If he'd done it the other way around, I would have been left at 4 HP, um, which can be very significant because, for example, the Lightning Bolt in his hand only deals 3 damage. So yep. if he'd done it the other way around and I would have frozen his board, he wouldn't have lethal maybe. And now I take game 1 with... Uh, Tons of direct damage. Yeah. The strength of the mage. Yeah, this is just like um, how you want freeze match, uh, freeze mage to play. This was like a perfect example of good draws and like how the deck is supposed to function. Yep. You know, just all of your card draw, then a lot of freeze, set up the ice block on turn eight. And then Alexstrasza them on turn 9 and kill them the next turn with direct damage. Yeah, um, so... When it works, it's beautiful. It doesn't always go to plan. Um, sometimes, you know, your pieces of the puzzle that, that you need just are in the bottom. Like, it's very hard to win if your Alexstrasza is like in the bottom 5 cards because you generally need that to have uh, enough damage. Yeah. Very good deck choice here by Karma to pick Control Warrior, that's like the absolute hard counter to Freeze Mage. Simply by armoring every turn, um, as you, you will win the game, as you can see, um, by doing armor up. Because um, the Freeze Mage, as you can see, has a limited amount of damage. Um, and, you know, if you can just armor up enough times, there simply isn't enough damage in the deck to kill. Yeah. So it's very important for Karma to armor up as much as possible in this matchup while trying to uh, kill the minions since you cannot leave the even the small creatures like loot hoarders, although they don't seem like a threat, um, 
I will try to play them to keep his armor down. That will be my goal of my minions in this matchup. To use my loot hoarders and officers to just like poke at his armor to keep it low. So he has to clear those while armoring up a lot. And if he does that correctly, then um, he uh, is almost guaranteed to win. Yeah, we see you throw back everything in your hand, hoping for some card draw, some small minions. Yeah, indeed, everything you are looking for is simply card draw. Um, Karmor has an interesting mulligan. He keeps the shield block and Ragnaros, which um, are very interesting uh, choices, which your cards you generally don't keep, but in this matchup, both are very good, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm not a very experienced control warrior player, but I think it's actually correct, since Ragnaros is good against the freeze mechanic and shield block is simply uh, broken in this matchup. You're thinking about maybe playing Blood Mage here? Why? Um, because Novice gives me the draw directly, Blood Mage I need to play and it needs to die. Just like, that's why I play Loot Hoarder before Novice, since um, if I play Loot Hoarder first, then next turn I can play Novice and have to card draw directly, you know? Oh, uh, with Loot Hoarder I need to play it, like, it's the slower card, so it's better to get out first. And that's why I was considering playing Blood Mage, since, like, I am gonna play it, um, probably anyway sometime soon like it's not generally not worth saving to like turn 10 to combo it with your spells for the spell damage yeah it's mainly also used for cycle like i mean when you draw it late game yes you can combo it with your spells for more damage but if you draw it this early um it just doesn't do much now this is like kind of annoying for me um because like hitting his face right now is pointless because I'm that that health that I would the damage that I would do is like useless because I am like, the only like in this matchup you 100% have to play Alex Strasse. like there's no way to win without Alex Strasse. so doing the two damage right now does absolutely nothing since yeah. Alex Strasse would kill it anyway so I think I'm going to I think it's correct to trade it into the two two. Um, playing the Blood Mage is also kind of weird because you can get a draw out of it with the Acolyte. But I don't really, you don't really care about the draws from the Warrior. Like, the only bad thing that he can draw is the Shield Blocks. <coughs> yeah. But besides that, like, if he draws a minion, like a Corcon Elite, like, those don't really matter. This is a pretty... Pretty weird turn for you, I guess. Nothing really good to do. I'm probably gonna play the Doomsayer, maybe in combination with some Freeze Effect, because, like, or with the Ice Barrier. I think uh, at this point I just want him to waste 7 damage on the Doomsayer to simply survive longer. Um... And uh, there's no rush for me to kill those minions, because as you can see in my hand, I have a Frost Nova, a Blizzard, and a Cone of Cold. So they will simply be stalled anyway. Like, um, like when he plays more minions, I'll just freeze the board and deal with it that way. Yeah. Now we see Karma starting to develop some armor. Pretty well. interesting that Karma didn't play the Cruel Taskmaster on... His acolyte there, like he could have done that and hit face for two more damage. Um, I guess maybe he wants to save it for Kuromash. Yeah, or maybe he doesn't want to overextend the board or something. Um, yeah. I, I don't really know why what the reasoning is, but it's. Well, after playing this against this deck, I guess he kind of wants to have the charge, the burst. Because I'm um, well, he yeah, but he does this turn. now, as you can see, this turn. So that makes it like he had the mana last turn for it. Um, I guess you could ping, ping it down. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure why he didn't do the last turn. 
see a Received little... shield block. I actually disagree with that shield block since now he did not use his hero power. It would have been better to use his hero power and then like later on hero power and shield block. Since that simply is more armor. Since you cannot hero power twice in a turn, so it's better to hero power now and then save the shield block for later. But I think that was a slight misplay since he simply misses two armor now, basically. Yeah. And that's literally all what this matchup is about. It's literally about the armor. My hand is running low. Like as you can see, like this game, I'm not drawing the arcane intellects and stuff, which is like in the early game I had some means like loot hoarders, but you. Like, the arcane intellects and um, really give you those plus ones, you know? You do get your Alex Strauss here, though. Yeah, like, that's a good draw, but the problem right now with it is that um, after Alex Strauss, I don't have enough burst to, uh, to kill him, so it's useless. Yeah, yeah like, after Alex Strauss, him, like, I can frostbolt and fireball his face, but then he just keeps armoring up and I still can't kill him, you know? Yeah. I'm definitely gonna ping his face simply to reduce his armor, and um, I'm not gonna fireball the the thing. I either throw snow for Blizzard here, since the Baron Geddon actually helps me right here a bit, since um, it kills his armor. Like, it simply does two damage to his own armor. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind that creature be. Still, this is looking very good for Karma. Like my hand is exhausted. Um, I've, uh, and he is actually applying quite a lot of pressure right now with Alex Strauss on me. So I'm pretty close to that actually already. I mean, you have a lot of freeze, but we're gonna see that burst from Gromash maybe put you down pretty low. Yeah, this was a tough decision. Like. It could Alex Strauss in his face, but the problem with it is I don't have enough burst to follow it up. Like even with the top deck, it's not enough. Like if even if I draw the second fireball, I could double fireball frostbolt, but if he simply armors up, it's not enough. Um So I'm pretty sure I'll just frost snow for here to stall the game more. To give myself more turns to draw into more damage. Pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, like normally it's actually the warrior that wants to stall, since like the longer the st he stalls the game, the more armor ups he can do. Well, we see him with the Baron getting he can't armor up. Uh, here comes the Ragnaros. Yeah, Ragnaros is correct. Like it's pointless indeed to armor up right now with the Baron Geddon since it would be negated. Um now I should Alex Strasse, which I'm going to do, because with the Ice Block, like I, it's going to be proc this turn, the the secret. Yep. But, uh... I think yeah. he kind of he kinda has to kill off the Baron Geddon here, which he's going to do. Yeah, that's very good play by him, because right now he has enough damage to kill me, so the Baron Geddon just makes, gives me more damage to kill him. Yep. So it was a very good play by him to trade it off, like... That was a good play for sure. And he should also armor up, um, just play all the armor he has. Yep. Um, sorry for not uh, being able to view Karma's hand. Um, at the start of the uh, game, we were able to view it, but I think there were some issues later on in the recording. That's why you can see it right now. Um, I hope in the future games that we can see his hand again. Um, yeah, it just makes it more interesting to see. Now we don't have no yeah, idea. Yeah, definitely. Since then you can, you know, um, see what decision he is making, you know, what his options are. Um, it seemed pretty awkward that he traded his Baron Geta and his Alex Trasa into the Alex Trasa. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter because he can kill you so easy with 5 HP. True, we, know, we know that he has the Gromash in his hand. We saw it before. Yeah, so it probably doesn't matter, it just seems awkward. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. you would expect him to have something like an Execute or a Shield Slam, or maybe like a Whirlwind to kill him. Yeah, for uh, sure. It's kind of weird. But it, it doesn't really matter. It's... 
Like, it's either, like, the question is now, can I kill him? And right now I can, so... Um. Pretty interesting that you freeze here. Yeah, the point, actually, if that is... Um, let's say you cannot kill the Loot Hoarder. There's a chance that the Ragnaros hits my Loot Hoarder and doesn't proc the Ice Block. That's literally the point of it. Like, since right now there is a possibility, although it's very, very low considering he has 10 cards in hand, it's almost impossible. But there is a chance that the ice block will live, which grants me another turn, which is what I'm hoping for. Like, the, the Frost Nova is going to be useless anyway, right? What it's going to do for me. Yeah, I guess. Um, a different play that I could have done this turn is go with uh, Ice Block and Fireball Frostbolt to his face. Um, and hope that I top deck Pyroblast next turn, since I do run one Pyroblast. That wouldn't be enough for lethal. But I didn't do that play because um, maybe it was correct to hope for that. But that would die to Alexstrasza, like if he would have had Alexstrasza. It's actually pretty close here. I got um, how much damage is this? I got fourteen damage right here, so I am four damage short. So it actually turned out pretty close. Um, this is my desperation attempt to survive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we know he has to grow mash. So if with a simple activator, he has won the game, and we saw the well played by Garment. So um. He is taking the second game in the match. Yeah, uh, we're not going to see a 3-0 from um, Wildcard this game. Karma managed to take game two. Yeah, it's uh, it's also not the point of my deck choice with the Freeze Mage to 3-0. Um, it's actually my game plan to win game one and lose game two against Control Warrior. Mm -hmm. Because I have my uh, a very special druid deck, as you can see right here. It's uh, definitely not your standard druid deck with arcane golems and uh, starfires, argent commanders. So it does a lot of damage. Yeah. Um, and it's specifically made to counter warriors. So the idea after losing game two to warriors to counter with this to be ahead 2 1. And then counters deck again. Yeah, I mean, I can see that working out pretty well. I, I was actually <clears throat> trying out the Freeze Mage yesterday in some tournaments. Didn't go too well for me, though, unfortunately. Yeah, it can definitely be a, a struggle. Like, um, it uh, like, it's... Uh, yeah, it's like tournaments are hard to win in general. Like, if you lose game one, uh, since most tournaments are best of three, let's say you get against a warrior game one and you play freeze mage, you are like, you almost hundred percent lost against warrior because it's such a terrible matchup. So then you're in a tough spot since you need to win two games in a row. Since so that's kind of a risk of playing freeze mage. But uh, if you win game one and it's pretty good at winning game one. You are in a good spot. Yeah. For sure. I can, I can see that. Like, my teammate, Czech Runo, who made the deck, has gotten top 8 in Gosu Cup. And I myself reached uh, top 16 this week in uh, Sota Cup with starting with the Fish Mage. So, it definitely has potential. Uh... Yeah, if you know that you can counter, like... If it's a tournament setup, that they will have to play the same deck if they win. They yeah, indeed, that, that they was. Counter. Yeah, and so like when I got top 16, this was my strategy, right? What you see here: um, starting game one, free smage, winning that game, getting countered by warrior, and then winning the third game with the druid. Yeah. That was uh, the strategy behind it, and it worked well. Um, Until you meet a warrior in game one. I actually met one, um, and I uh, lost that game, and I won two games in a row with Druid. 
but then I sadly, uh, the next game I played against one of his teammates. Like I faced two players from Meteor Makers, which is a very good team, and uh, yeah. against the second player, I uh, lost. And like I didn't start Freeze Mage because I knew uh, he. Like the, like the only time I lost in Sotek with the Freeze Mage was when I didn't play the Freeze Mage yeah. at the start of the day. But well, let's talk about these games. Um, you see um, a pretty good hand for me um, with the double harvest golem. So I coin one out because I can play the second one the next turn. So it fits well in my curve. Yep. And um, it's very hard to deal for with a harvest golem for warrior. You need like an and a fiery war axe and a cruel task massacre to clear it efficiently um which costs four mana and um yeah he doesn't have either of those cards in his hand so it's actually quite hard for him to kill it right now you see me spamming the sorry emote because i accidentally forgot to press the end turn button so there was a little bit of delay because of that we see i mean your hand is your hand isn't that great after, I mean, if you can draw some pretty good draws, maybe, but after this Harvest Colon, you don't really have anything to do. That's true. Um, uh, overall, so far, I'm pretty satisfied with my draws. I mean, having a turn 2 and a turn 3 Harvest Golem is, like, a very strong opening. Um, like, right now, I have a very strong board. Um, there, I do draw a nice turn 4 play. Um Definitely have some options since both targets are worth silencing. Um, yeah, you see, you silence the acolyte, which might seem weird, but um, card draw. Like, I don't want to worry to have card draw since you can uh, win this matchup simply by having like stuff like Ancient of Lores and uh, the Ardent Commanders. Like, there are actually a lot of value cards in this deck, and uh, hmm. Yeah, would you consider Savage Roaring here? I considered it, but it wasn't very good. Uh, like, the swipe seemed very good. Um, you see me clear off the uh, the Armsmith first with my Harvest Golems, because if I would have swiped first, he would have gotten more armor. Yeah. So this way he only has one armor. And he, his entire board is cleared with the swipe, and I still have, like, three creatures with... Uh, Oh, at least 2 HP, which is very annoying for him since he doesn't have enough mana for Baron to get and then Whirlwind just doesn't cut it. Like, that's the strength of this deck. It kind of functions like Sue in that sense. It's just really hard for the warrior to keep the board clear. Here you see me go for a very aggressive play. Um, with... Uh, with the Innervate, because I'm going to Innervate the uh, Hero Power, as you can see, to take out the the minion, so I don't have to run my creature into it. Since I could have simply traded my 2-1 uh, minion for it, but uh, I want to keep more minions on the board with the Severed Draw in hand. And uh, it baits Karmat into playing the Baron again. Um, and this is actually a good game already because um, yeah. this is lethal with uh, Leroy Jenkins Savage Roar. <laughs> it's a very, very quick game. And, and uh, yeah, turn 7 victory against Control War. It's not something you see often because it's actually a really hard class to kill in general. Yeah. Because of all the armor. and. Uh, we, see, we see you actually got pretty good a mana curve for the whole game, which was, I mean... What well, definitely. Uh, yeah. I think it mainly was the Harvest Golem start. Um, the Harvest Golems are just really strong in this matchup. Yeah, so you take game two in a pretty decisive, decisive, uh, decisive way. Yeah, indeed. Like, like I said, like the deck is specifically built to counter Warrior, and uh, it did definitely show that this game. Although normally this game actually, like these games actually take very long this was a turn seven lethal most of the times it takes like 15 turns or something yeah. um it was just like because i had 
because I could develop such a strong board with a lot of minions, the Sephiroth just you know finished the game quickly. So now we're gonna see Karmath uh, go with his own version of his uh, mage deck. Did you do you know uh, before this game? Did you know what, what mage it was? I had no clue about his mage deck before the game, and uh, I was very surprised in the actual game because there were a lot of cards. Um, I completely did not expect it. I expected like an aggro mage, okay. or or maybe a freeze mage of his own, okay. um, or like a mid range mage. But I definitely did not expect a mage with secrets. Yeah, because this is the deck he used to get where he is in legend right now. I have no idea how he manages to win games with this deck because I cannot play it. I've tried it a lot, and I just lose. Yeah, I haven't, try haven't tried it yet, but I'm definitely going to try it since um, for the viewers this seems like a really weird deck and they might think like, what the hell? But uh, Karma used this deck to get legend number 4, so uh, leg being legend number 4 is very impressive and you need to have a very high win rate for it and yeah. he did it with this deck. So this deck definitely has a lot of potential. Part of it is probably the surprise effect because you've... Uh, like, with all the secrets, you know, it gets like really messy. Like, do you play around counter spell or do you play around mirror entity? What do you expect? You know, it's yeah. very hard to properly play around um, all those secrets. Yeah. I don't think Karmat is very happy with his uh, hand though. No, definitely not. You don't see any early minions. Um, I guess he has the arcane intellect, which is decent. And. Um, because I played a loot hoardy, he gets a decent turn too, so I think he's actually fine with me playing that, because otherwise he didn't really have a good turn too. And we see you're gonna drop Harvest Golden, you're gonna be very happy. You have a Chill and Jetty for next turn. Yeah, indeed, loot hoarder into Harvest Golden, into Chill and Jetty, that's generally the curve you want to see with my deck. Um, it has a low curve, my deck, so often you you curve quite well. Like it's a very consistent deck, actually, and I mean, if your curve sucks, like, if you just draw an innervate, you know, that generally solves your curve problems. I mean, he would have been so happy if the mirror entity was in his hand before. He actually, yeah, actually... His hand is been... pretty nice now, though, like, um, that was a pretty good turn, and with uh, Kieran Tormage, mirror entity next turn... He's in a decent spot. What do you think you hear? Maybe Innervate, but I mean, Chill and Jetty is just so strong. Yeah, I'm thinking about two things. Do I drop the Chill and Jetty or do I Innervate the Argent Commander? I believe I'm just going to play the Chill and Jetty. I mean, that's what because, I would definitely do. Yeah. It's not really a good Innervate because... Chill and Jetty fits the curve, and if I innervate now, I have no good turn five and no good turn six, really. Like, it's, like you'd mainly want to use innervate to fill out your curve, and this just does it as well as you know innervate Argent. He goes with the polymorph on the. And there, I top deck a really good card since it fits perfectly with the curve yeah. to innervate out the lore or, you know, and sets up a Argent Commander next turn. So I was definitely very happy with that one. And now it's kind of awkward for Karmos right here. This is where I think his deck kind of fails. Yeah, I expect like here in Tormage, the secret and pinging the 2-1 and that's what he ends up going with. Um, it's not too bad of a position. Uh, it's not great, though. Right now, this is probably the point where I was a bit surprised with the Curing Tormage and the Secret. I mean, so far, the cards he played were, were pretty normal, but I definitely did not see this coming. And right now, um, I take a lot of time thinking about, like, what am I going to do? Because I was confused by the Secret. Yeah. Um, I play the Keeper because it's fine if it's Mira Entity, which it ends up being. Um, you know, it makes up for a good trade. And uh... Yeah, I think he was hoping for something a bit better than uh, Keeper. 
Yeah, he probably hoped for, like, my Argent Commander. Like, this is where I, pl I played around Mirror Entity. Like, I could have easily dropped the Argent Commander and charged into the uh, Kirin Tormage. Yeah. Which, well, if he didn't play a secret, that's probably what I would have done. But because I was scared of the Mirror Entity copying the Argent Commander, I went with the Keeper, since that's fine if he copies that. Like, it's not a big deal. 2-4. Yep. Goes with another Polymorph. Yeah, it doesn't have any other good play, so he just goes with the Polymorph to deal with the aggression. Yeah, I um, guess he could have uh, Fireballed it as well, but I mean, that's not as strong. No, I think he wants to save that to use for my face, I guess. I mean, his deck also runs an Alex Strass and an Ice Block, so with those, he could sort of. Do like a freeze mage uh, style of play with like Alex Rossing me and then finishing with me with the fireball, frostbolt, and pyroblast. Yeah. Um, harder to pull off with his deck though, since his deck isn't built around that combo. Um, but it's a possibility. My deck just like I just tried to develop the board theater with uh, the harvest golem and clearing his board with the red. Did Spell he... damage from Asher Drake allows him to uh, kill the keeper with the Frostbolt. We see a lot of damage in Karma's hand though, but I mean, you just have so many drops that can just like get gain board control. He doesn't really have anything to do against it. Yeah, and the, like the Argent Commander right here is very strong against. Uh against the uh, Asher Drake, like it's generally considered the counter to Asher Drake to Argent Commander it. And um, I'm very confident at this point because you see me with the uh, Force of Nature Savage Roar in hand, so I actually have a very good chance of having lethal next turn. Now we see Karma play the Kirin Tormage and the uh, and the uh, spell counter, or what the hell it's called? Counter yeah. spell? Um, this actually is really annoying for me since I have lethal with Force of Nature Savage Roar, but the you know the counter spell you know blocks the Force of Nature if I go for that. So this was one really hard turn. Like, do I play around Mirror Entity? Do I play around counter spell? You know what do I expect? And um, here you see me hit with face with the Harvest Golem to check if it's vaporize. I kind of hoped it was. Um, it isn't though, and. Uh, <laughs> made me kind of sad that my Force of Nature got counterspelled, and maybe that was a mistake by me. Um, yeah. Hard to tell, though, like... I mean, you kind of had to, I guess. I could have just tried for the swipe or something, um, or maybe just trying to develop my board, but yeah, it might have as well have been, you know, Mirror Entity, so if I would have gone with the Ancient of Lore, it wouldn't have been very good either. So we see him develop a ice block here. Do you have a do you have a way to deal eight plus five? That's thirteen. No. I don't have a way for lethal. So you see me red first here because to test for the counter spell again. Um, that's why I didn't start off with it. Um, now you see me play, the, this is also like a very important note that I played the Loot Hoarder before I swipe the Arcanist, since in case it's Mirror Entity, the swipe would have also killed the Loot Hoarder. Um, yeah, very smart. So right now I expect it to be Ice Block, since it's not Counterspell, not Mirror Entity, and, uh, and there are not many other good secrets left, like Spellbender is the possibility. No, I used the spell, so it can't be spellbender. Oh yeah, true. So it's like it can only be ice block. At it this can point. only be ice block at this point, yes. Yeah, I guess Karma hit what he wants. Yeah, he definitely but, uh, wanted to hit. Uh, and now you just see me go for the charge to proc the uh, to proc the ice block since. Yeah, um, I mean you know you've won at this point. Yeah, pretty much because yeah. You have two. I can ways. Uh, I can uh, kill it next turn him next turn even if he clears my minion, so Yeah, 
mean, there are, it's not 100% guaranteed, though. I was kind of scared for maybe an Alex Trasa on himself. Like, if he Alex Trasa at himself and he would have hit uh, Druid of the Claw with the Ragnaros, I would have been in a tough position. We see Karma make a small error with Fireballing before playing the Mana Worm. It doesn't matter, though, since... Um, yeah, I have lethal here, so it wouldn't have mattered either way. Yeah. You have a lot of ways to kill him right there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of ways indeed. So yeah, the Druid, uh, the Druid performs well. It's also why I like to play that deck in tournaments, because people don't know how to counter it. Um, for example, his mage deck, um, he had pretty bad draws, I think. Um, like, he had a slow start, but overall, I don't think it's a very good counter to the Druid deck, so um, that's the advantage. And I'm happy I actually won the game, because I don't know how to counter his Secret Mage deck either, so I would have had the same problem. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's I think that's a pretty strong point in the meta right now, that you if you play decks that <clears throat> people don't know how to counter, they don't really have to be, like extremely good they just have to have like a surprise factor yeah um definitely having a surprise factor in your deck as you can see see today uh is a strong uh factor but um you can't add too many surprises since generally if your deck is like too random it's probably just a bad deck yeah uh, so you need to have a solid deck with simply let's say adding a black knight to a list that generally doesn't run black knight yeah. Um, could be very helpful. Like no warrior, like every warrior didn't have Black Knight. Nowadays they do, but if you ran it back then, people wouldn't play around warrior with Black Knight since yeah, nobody exactly. used it. Exactly. So then you know a druid taunts up his druid of the claw instead of charging it, and you can take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, well, we see uh, Grade Four wins this uh, in a three-one. Uh, puts Wildcard ahead of two-one in this series. Yes, so we will have too much, two uh, two more matches coming up for you guys. Um, so uh, stay tuned, and uh, yeah, we will have some more exciting games for you with uh, more awesome decks. And uh, yeah, for sure. So um, that is it for me, Wild Powder, and uh, Great Four for this time. Thank you for watching. <laughs>